I'm Jennifer New, and um, I wear many different hats in the community, including I work at the University of Iowa, and I'm the mother of two kids. Um, but for our context today, I'm a yoga teacher, and I teach at Heartland Yoga, which is in downtown Iowa City, um, in the same building as the Bread Garden, and right across the street from the public library. Um, I've been teaching yoga for about five years, but I've been practicing yoga for 25 years. So um, I started practicing yoga in my kind of early to mid-20s um, at a time when I was work, working in Seattle, and I had a long commute, and I had a stick shift, and then I was going every day, and I had a mouse. And so between those two things, my back was getting really messed up. And so I thought, well, I'll try, I'll try yoga. And um, it was funny because at the same time, I was also had started doing therapy for some kind of mild depression that I was experiencing, you know, kind of mid-20s, what to do with your life. And I had also started meditating with a, um, with a group. And I didn't get at that time that all of those things were really, I was trying to do the same thing. And eventually I understood that. And so um, to me, the beauty of yoga is that it does help you with your body, which is why a lot of people come to it, but it also helps you with mental activity and kind of your, your mood and you know and your and your heart and so all of that is kind of combined into one in this practice which is why it feels different than uh you know a sport you know like going running or swimming i'm a long time swimmer or something so i wanted to give just a little bit of an overview of the history of yoga because i think in the united states we have some kind of misconceptions about what yoga is and then just do some very, very gentle practice um, that might be helpful for people to, to try on their own. So um, the word yoga um, actually means union or yoke, um, like a, you know, yoking together. And um, this can have several different uh, kind of meanings. And so one is, is bringing into union yourself with any kind of higher power. It is also bringing um, into union movement and the breath. And so during a yoga class, you'll often be reminded to breathe and to breathe in unison with what you're doing, with your activities. Um, and then I think it's also this union of the mind, the body, and the heart, as I mentioned. And so in my classes, I always ask people, like at the beginning of class and at the end of class, to kind of check in, like, you know, how, how is your mind right now? And, and you'll often, like, it'll take you a second, like, well, that's a weird question, but then you'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, my mind is really, really busy right now, or it's sluggish and kind of dull. And then after you practice for an hour, I'll ask again, how, how's your mind right now? and so that you can start to see what are the effects of the practice. <clears throat> so just a very, very brief history into this really ancient art form. So yoga was developed in the 5th or 6th BCE in India, and um, one of its goals was to quiet the mind. And so um, they were going about this in different ways, and one was studying um, essentially scripture uh, and um, prayer and devotion, um, uh, and also through um, practices of love and caring for others, which is why it's a, a very great practice for somebody who's in a caretaking situation. Um, meditation, um, paying attention to your breath, and another one of those was movement. And so that is called um, asana. And what Americans have taken of yoga is largely that. So we took all this other stuff and we had boiled it down to like, how can we get in shape? And how can we move? And I think um, many people who have like a long practice of yoga and are really sort of drawn to the, the entire package of yoga 
the, the physical aspect of it becomes kind of less and less important as you go. It's like it feels good, it's really helpful, it feels great, but it's not, it's just one of many parts of yoga. Um, one thing I, I like that is here in this, this bottom point is that sometimes yoga is called a technology for transformation. So I, I like that because yoga is such an ancient, ancient practice, and then using this word technology. Um, uh, but it is, it's like this whole group of things that you can do that will, that will help you to transform yourself. Um, so although yoga was developed many centuries ago, um, what we know of as yoga today really came about more in the turn of the last century. And um, so there was a guy in India named Krishnamacharya, and he is considered the father of modern yoga. And he took readings from ancient texts, and he also even looked around at what was happening in India at that time, which the British were of course in India and they had different forms of um, uh, you know kind of like gymnastics and calisthenics and he sort of combined all of that and came up with these different um, poses and this different physical activity and so that that kind of laid the groundwork for for modern yoga and then several of his students um, took it and then developed their own kind of, they, they, they like did their own little spin on it. And uh, so it's almost like if you had baseball and then you had like three or four different main baseball guys and they'd gone and developed their own slightly different form of baseball. And then those went out and that's what becomes called lineages. And so pretty much everybody who is studying, taking, practicing yoga in the United States is on one of these lineages of this family tree that all go back to Krishnamacharya. And so this is just an example. These are some famous American yoga teachers and I, I included Lilius in the top right corner because she had a PBS show for years and so that's what a lot of people know. And um, but, but we tend to associate yoga with these more difficult poses. And I just like that there are people of every size and shape and background who do yoga. Um, so I actually just discovered this um, African-American woman on the top right the other day, and she has a whole blog, and she just shows herself doing these amazing poses. And she's a big woman, but she can do very advanced poses. And, um, so I think it's, it's being really embraced by a wider and wider population. So some of the benefits of yoga, as I kind of already hinted at it, has both these sort of emotional and mental benefits. Um, but some of the physical issues that yoga can aid are, of course, overall flexibility, not surprising. Um, it helps with balance a lot. So. It's something that um, older people, that's one thing that will bring people to yoga is because they realize that they need to start working on their balance. Um, because there's so much attention to breathing, it does help with respiration. Um, and it can do some increased muscle tone. It's not, you know, gonna chisel you or anything, but there's definitely, you're holding your own weight in yoga. And so it is a weight bearing practice. Um, these are small here, but some of the mental benefits, well, first of all, I love this quote, which comes from the Bhagavad Gita, which is one of the essential texts of yoga, and that is, yoga is the practice of tolerating the consequences of being yourself. So, um, it, you know, it helps us live in our own skin. Um, it gives us increased patience and equanimity. Um, if you can learn how to do a pose that's difficult for you and be patient with it and be accepting of yourself, then, then that creates more self-love. It gives you this connection to the breath that you can then use when you're stressed out. It helps your serotonin levels go up. It increases your focus. 
it fosters good brain health, and it can assist with pain management. So just a, a few personal notes on two of those. I actually helped care for my father a number of years ago when he had lung cancer and it was a year-long journey before he died and um, and yoga was really central to helping me take care of myself through that and so you know if we'd be in a waiting room or going through for tests or something and I was feeling anxious I could kind of I could go into my breath and find a way to take care of myself um, similarly, two years ago, I had a very major cyst in my spine that it took quite a while to figure out what it was, and I was in really severe pain. And that breath work and the meditation also allowed me to cope with that pain. So I was very thankful, even though in both of those situations, I didn't either have the time or the physical capability to be doing my full practice, I was still practicing, you know, and, and I, I remember talking to a woman who'd been doing yoga for years, and I was frustrated, and she said, you know, I was in a car accident at one point, and for a year, pretty much my entire practice was breathing, and, and she said, and you can make that your practice. So this, this is my last slide, and these are just a few quotes from some well-known uh, teachers that I, I think sum up why yoga is important to me. So fall with awareness and acceptance. And this teacher is great. He'll have you do all these crazy balancing things. And then he'll say, well, fall over, you know, just fall. And then they'll say, and laugh when you fall. He's like, you know, when little kids fall, they laugh. And he's like, why do we get so mad at ourselves? You know, he's like, so just embrace it. Um, and then if your compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete. So I think especially in in the area of caregiving, you know, it's so much easier for us to be compassionate toward others, to, you know, I, as a mother, you know, to make sure that all of their needs are met and that they are loved. But are we, you know, are you putting on your own air mask from the, the whole airplane thing? Um, and whatever you do in life, yoga shows you how to do it better. So, just that it, it again, it is this practice that you can kind of take off, take into all other aspects of your life. Let's start <laughs> with just sit back in your chair with both of your feet on the ground, hip width apart. And we're going to just try some basic um, breathing. And it might be easier on this first one to close your eyes just because you'll be able to pay attention more to what's going on. Okay? So, all right. So, we're going to go ahead and take a big inhale through the nose and then exhale through the mouth. So, so just take a few of those. Inhale through the nose and exhale through an open mouth. Open mouth. And you can even kind of ha it out a little. Take one more. Great. So now we're going to reverse that. You're going to inhale through an open mouth and then exhale through your nose. Inhale through an open mouth. Exhale through your nose. Take one more. Great. And then next, Exhale, inhale and exhale through an open mouth. Take that just three times. Good. And then finally, inhale and exhale just through your nose with your mouth closed. And after your last breath, go ahead and open your eyes. So which of those felt most calming or felt, felt good? For me, the first and the last. So the first and the last. So in through the nose, out through the mouth, or in through the nose, out through the nose? Yeah. You too? Okay. 
Any ideas on why that might be? I don't know, but that those middle ones, taking it in, just felt like too much, and I almost started to feel a little anxious, mm -hmm. like feeling a little... Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so when we, if you think of like a dog um, <laughs> panting, so those are shallow, shallow breaths. So when we breathe through just our mouth, we're often just breathing really up here. And it's, and it's light breathing, and it tends to be what we do when we're stressed out and or just really not paying attention to our breath, which for most of, most of us, most of the time, we're really not paying that much attention to our breath. But then if you think, like if you see a beautiful sunset or something, you kind of go, ah. So that's this big, ha ah, exhalation. And it's like breathing in through the nose and just ha, ah, letting it go. So any time that you feel just you're getting, you don't even have to be in full flung stressed out, just a little, just a little tight, come, just be aware of your breath and see if you can just take a few nice deep breaths that are either in through the nose, out through the mouth, or nose, nose, okay? And then see if you can start to expand that breath so it's not just here, but you're breathing down into the belly. So bring, right now, bring your hands onto your belly and just take a few breaths where you're really having a sense of expanding the belly and that you can feel your hands rise and fall while you do that. So again, if it, if it helps to close your eyes, go ahead and do that. So as well as feeling your belly rise and fall on your hands, bring awareness to your lower back, kind of the curve of the lower back and where it's resting on the back of the chair. And see if you can also feel yourself expand against that space. So when we breathe, it's a three-dimensional activity. You know, we're not just breathing for, into the forward space but the breath fills up the side body and the back of the body as well. Great, and go ahead and release. So another idea of something that you can do if you're feeling stressed is, um, or I'll even do this like before bed or if I wake up in the middle of the night, which I tend to do and my brain gets going. So I'll be on my back and I'll bring something weighted to my belly. So usually it's just another pillow, but it could be like a folded blanket, but something that will just, you'll be able to feel it rise and fall. And then I'll just come into awareness of that breath. And, so, and sometimes I'll even bring a count to it. So inhale and hold for a moment and then exhale. And the exhalations are what really get our sympathetic nervous system talking or calming down. The sympathetic nervous system is what helps us calm down. So if you can extend the exhalations, so you take an inhale, maybe that would take two counts, and pause and then see if you can make your exhalation a little longer than two counts. So that you breathe in, one, two, hold for a moment, and then exhale, one, two, three, maybe even four, and then begin the breath again. And you want to do that as sort of fluidly and evenly as possible. If you're, if you're really having to work and have that be kind of jagged, then it, that's not going to do you much good. And, and one thing you'll find is that the longer you do that, the more you can start slowing down those exhalations. So this is kind of a little false because we're, we're just doing it for a moment here. But if we were to lay here for like 15 minutes, you would start to calm down. And I mean, even though none of us are probably especially stressed at this given moment, even still, 
you would calm down and the breath would get longer and looser and easier. So it's a, it's a good thing to play with and then you can use that for all sorts of different purposes. So right now let's sit up forward on our chair. <coughs> and so again, feet are flat on the floor. And yeah, just move that stuff so that your feet can be down there. And let's go ahead um, and think of a kind of a golden thread coming from the crown of the head and just pulling you up just a little taller. And it may be that nobody can even see you grow a little taller, but you just have a sense of like being pulled up. And now feel your sits bones, just wobble a moment. And there are those sharp bones and we can all feel them. It does not matter how large we are. I always tell people they're there, okay? And now you're thinking of rooting down through those sits bones. And another thing you might think of is like that action when you close a car door with your butt. So kind of just give yourself a little sense of huh, like go, that's going down and this is going up, all right? So that's something in a lot of yoga poses is you've got this this uh, opposite movement. So there's the inhale yourself up, exhale yourself down. All right? And very subtle. And very subtle. Yeah, yeah. Although sometimes it can help to do it unsubtly yeah, just right. to really feel it. Right. So um, it doesn't work very well in the seated position, but if we're in another position, I can, I can show that better. So, but right now we're just going to work with our neck. So we're going to inhale and thinking of growing tall and then exhale, let your left ear just drop down toward your left shoulder and just let it hang there. And then take this hand, this opposite hand and just let it hang. And so the head is, I've heard, as heavy as a bowling ball. I've never, I've never actually weighed one. To, right, I've never proved that, but nonetheless, even if it's anywhere close, we are carrying around this big old weight. Okay, so now you're going to take just a tiny quarter turn, tucking your chin in toward your collarbone and looking down at that left knee. So it just slightly changes the stretch. And just checking in with your breath. Is it easy? Is it loose? Can you continue to have nice long exhalations? Great. Rotate back to your starting position, ear toward shoulder, ear toward, toward shoulder. And then bring the left hand up to the side of the head and literally prop the head back up so that you don't have to do any work with those muscles. All right, so we'll take the other side. We'll begin by inhale, growing tall, and then exhale, right ear toward right shoulder, and then release the left hand, and just let it be heavy, and so that you're getting as much stretch up the side of the neck as you can. Notice what your jaw is doing and if there's any way to soften it. So our, when we have tension in our necks, it's often um, related to tension and holding in the jaw. Take that very small rotation. So t chin tucks in toward collarbone, glance, gaze goes down toward the right knee. I mean, you're welcome to keep your eyes closed, but just if you were looking, that's where your gaze would be. Great. Ear rotates back toward shoulder. Right hand comes up to the side of the head and just push your head up. So now we're going to take an inhale, grow tall, and then on the exhale, just look to your left. And like imagine that you could put a splotch on the wall and just notice where your gaze goes. Use an inhalation to come back through center and exhale, turn your head the opposite way. And again, 
make a mark on the wall to notice how far you can go. Inhale through center and exhale back to the left. Inhale through center and exhale to the right. Inhale through center and we'll take it one more time. Exhale and just notice if you're looking any farther than that first paint splotch. Inhale through center and exhale over to the opposite. And inhale back to center. And just breathe easily. So let's inhale and look up and let your head come back just a little and think of really opening through the throat and the front of the neck. And then on an exhalation, slowly let your chin draw in toward your chest and then just weight down and be heavy. And you might notice the trapezius muscles at the upper, kind of very upper shoulders, upper back, get a little release here. And then you'll use an inhalation to come back up and then just keep going. We'll take both of those positions one more time. So opening through the throat, thinking of the front of the chest being a little more open. And then exhale, come down, chin drops all the way down. And just breathe here a few times, feeling this heaviness in the upper back, any little release you might get there. And then just inhale back up to center. Great, we're gonna raise our arms up overhead and have your palms facing each other. Now notice your shoulders actually reach, intentionally reach up really high and now soften your shoulders, okay? So you want to avoid that like gripping in your shoulders. So don't do that. Soften through the shoulders, but then be energetic in the fingers. And if it's okay with your neck, look up. If that hurts your neck, just look straight ahead, okay? And now come into awareness with your breath and just notice how even just being in this position slightly changes the breath, okay? And if you think to the internal organs, you're, you're moving things a little. So the pathway for the breath is a little different. So just kind of noticing the effects of that. Take another nice big inhale. And on the exhale, let your left hand drop down and see if you can bring it to the side of your chair. You might need to, to scooch a little so you can get the hand onto the side of the chair. Great. And then we're going to reach our right fingertips toward the side wall. Now, come into awareness of your right sits bone and press it down a little bit more. So you're closing the car door with your right bum because there's a tendency to lean up and off and you want to avoid that. Now, can you think of breathing into the right rib cage and the right side body? And you just want to be soft here. If you're starting to shake or something, then you're going too hard. I always say, like, find 65%. What does 65% feel like? Great. And go ahead, release, and lift your arms back up. And you might have to scoot yourself over to the other side of your chair because we're just going to take the other side. So exhale that arm down and find a little grip there for your hand. And now you're going to reach the left fingertips over toward the opposite wall and press the left sits bone into the chair so that you're not leaning up and away. And bring the breath. It's like you could just breathe more space between the left ribs. Great. And on an inhale, come back up. Walk yourself to the center if you moved. And now we're going to come into a twist. So on an exhale, you're going to turn to your left. Your top hand is going to come across. Yep. 
and then your back hand is going to come either on the back of your chair or it can come around on it can either be like this or it could just be on the back of the seat if this is too much but part of what you're doing in a twist is this front hand on the leg you can just see it can help you turn a little bit more and then this is giving you support but once again find that easy place of kind of 65 percent and now on the inhalations feel yourself growing up toward the sky and then on the exhalations breathing down to everywhere you're connected to the ground or the chair so start at the base of the spine and on the inhalations breathe up the spine growing tall toward the sky and on the exhalations breathe back down the spine and as though you're breathing down into the ground so this lengthening and rooting down take another inhale and on the exhale slowly unwind and come back to center So we'll take the other side. So inhale, reach up, and then exhale, turn to your right. So left hand comes across your thigh, just onto the thigh. Judy, just there you go, yeah. And then your back hand can either come onto the back of the chair, either up on the back, or it can come down onto the seat. If it's okay with your gaze, you can turn and look over your right shoulder. And if it's not okay, just looking down at the floor. But come back to the breath and starting at the base of the spine, imagine yourself inhaling upward and then exhale down into the ground into the chair so inhale toward the sky and exhale toward the ground and just take one more inhalation and exhale come back to center so coming toward the edge of your chair if you're not already and you might walk your feet just a little wider now than hip width apart. And so we're going to take something um, cat-cow that you may have seen done on all fours um, in kind of a tabletop position, but we're going to take a chair variation. So your hands will be kind of cupping over your knees. And I'll just take a few and then you can join me. So on your exhalations, you're going to be rounding and really curving your back. And then on your inhalations, you're gonna be drawing your heart forward and opening through the upper chest and your lower back will have kind of a hammock shape, okay? So exhale, you round and come back on your sits bones, actually almost off the sits bones. And then as you inhale, your weight comes forward and exhale rounding so just taking this with your own breath you don't need to stay in time with me and i like to tell people that if you can really use this as a way to align your breath with your movement so that you're at the height of your inhalation like your your last sip of air when you're at the height of looking up and then you start to slowly exhale and the air is just all gone when you get to the furthest point of your curving of that C-shaped spine. Then one thing you can bring into this if you are looking for a little more activity is that on the inhales you can reach an arm up and then on the exhale you bring the arm back down 
So it just brings another element into this. Another way to coordinate breath and movement. And taking one more and coming back down. So taking your feet even wider and have your toes out at an angle, so like at a diagonal. And we're going to come, bring your hands, your fingers toward the middle and then sitting up tall. And now think of lowering your belly toward the ground. And now you might pause here, or you might bring your forearms onto your knees. You can even think of walking your sits bones back, and you can pause here. Or if this still feels fine, and you would like to go further, you could bring your fingertips to the ground and then release your head. So any of these variations, what we're doing is um, a form of a squat. So much of the world s hangs out in a squatting position, and we as Americans sit, and this is not good for our hips. So anything you can do to squat more is really great for your hips. And the other benefit of what we're doing here is you're in a forward fold, and your head is released. And that is a calming pose. So that is calming again to the nervous system. And so Judy, on yours, I think have your, have your arms up here on your legs. And then let, think of your knees dropping out as much as possible toward the wall behind, yeah, behind you. And then think of your sits bones going back that way and your heart going this way. Good. And then just let your head relax. So none of this is ever about getting into, you know, the, the furthest, hardest, most extended version of a pose. What we're always trying to do is find the place that feels good to our body. And then once you get there, just being with the breath, okay? So to come out of this, you would just bring your hands back onto your um, knees. And then I would just roll up. So think of your vertebrae. Think of like building a Lego statue and just boom, 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 all the way rolling up to seated. All right. So one other thing that we can do here for, that was, a, that was somewhat for the hips, is we can see about crossing an ankle over a knee. All right. Okay. So once again, you're sitting up tall, you've got that golden thread. And then on an exhale, you're going to let your heart just start coming forward. And just come to your degree so that you're feeling it in this left hip. So, and you can look down at the, your left foot and can you flex your left foot? And so just pausing here. And this is a great pose in that you can do this sitting in a hospital chair, sitting sometimes, if you're lucky, in an airplane chair. <laughs> uh, that's less and less true, but um, certainly in an airport waiting room. And uh, I mean, a lot of us have really tight hips, so it's a great thing to do every now and then. So again, come up, just push yourself up with a flat back as much as possible and go ahead and release and we'll just take the other side. And you may find that one side is really different than the other side, that's very common, okay? So sitting up tall and pressing into the sit bones and then heart is coming forward. 
And just again, going to your degree so that you're feeling some sensation in that glute, in that hip, but it's not like, ow. You don't want to get to that place. You just want to feel some sensation. Take another inhale and exhale. Go ahead and come up. Let's sit all the way back on our chair now. And we're going to bring our feet out in front of us. And we're just going to flex and point, flex and point, opposite toes. This is really best if you do barefoot, but we've got our shoes on right now, so we'll just go with that. Great. And then bring both of them flexing and then turn them out. And then turn them in and come back to center and let's circle crackling crackling and I will do this series in bed every morning when I wake up I have really tight calves and hamstrings and so I'll just lay in bed and do this and then reverse your circles it's harder to do this way <laughs> And then one thing if you want to work your brain is you can try and get your feet going opposite directions. Okay. <laughs> All right. And go ahead and come back. So let's go ahead and stand up. So um, let's start with our feet a little wider than hip width apart. And just look down that your feet are parallel, okay, so that, you know, one foot isn't off to the side. And we're just going to um, take easy swinging twists, and I'm going to knock this thing here. So, um, so imagine that your arms are like cooked spaghetti noodles, and they are just flopping. And so let them flop against your sides. And that the body is kind of going around a central axis. So like there was a pull all the way down the center of the body and you're just twisting around that. So this isn't entirely unlike twisting out a washcloth. And you're just kind of letting things go. And take a few nice deep breaths here. So inhale. <sighs> and either exhale through the mouth or through the nose. If you get dizzy doing this, it can help to close your eyes because the eyes are part of what speaks to that whole equilibrium. And slow it back down to center. Let's bring our hands to our hips now. And we're just going to take some big hip twists. So like you have a hula hoop on your hips. And you're just slowly going around the circumference of that hula hoop. Yeah. And do your hula hoop the other direction. Great, and come back to center. So one pose, if you've either watched people do yoga or even seen jokes about yoga <laughs> on Facebook or YouTube, is kind of the yoga pose is downward facing dog. So I'm just going to do a very quick one so you know what I'm talking about. So you would be starting on all fours. You curl your toes under and you press back into this position, okay? So there are many ways to get the benefits of downward dog, and one of the benefits is that it is an arm strengthening pose um, without um, doing that. So one is that if there's a wall here, you can just bring your arms against the wall and walk yourself out and press against the wall. But we're gonna use a chair so you want to make sure your chair is in a steady place. So we have nice carpeting here, but um, if 
this were say a wood floor, I would just make sure the backs of my chair legs were against a wall. So something so that your chair isn't whew, going out, okay? So um, I'm going to put my hands on the back of the chair at like a shoulder distance. So, you know, straight out from my shoulders and then putting my hands down. Now just watch before you do anything. I'm then going to walk back and then I'm going to bring my ears in line with my arms. When I get here, I'm going to think of my sits bones pressing out toward the wall behind me as I continue to feel active in my arms, okay? So part of what you're doing is feeling activation in your arms and then activation in the back of the legs. So going ahead and walking yourself back a little, Judy. There you go. Make your feet a little wider. So if you're stiff, having a wider stance is going to be better. And then you're thinking of drawing your sits bones back to the wall behind you. And then you're pressing into your hands. And part of what happens is you get almost a feeling of like hollowing out in your armpits a little bit. As you press into your hands, that just raises up the arms and hollows out the armpits. Now bring awareness to your legs and think of drawing energy up the front of the legs. So raise your kneecaps up. Yeah, good. And it, that will engage the thigh muscles, the quad muscles. And then you'll keep thinking of sending your sits bones back behind you, but pressing into the chair. And now breathe. If you're not breathing, breathe. Great, take another inhale and on an exhale, slowly walk forward toward the chair. Terrific, great. So now we're just going to turn the chair around and stand next to it. So you're gonna have the side of the chair available, great. And we're just gonna work on balance a little. So the chair is merely here as a prop to help us. And so if anybody out there decides they don't need the chair, you can just kind of walk a little ways away from it, but know that it's right there. All right, so we're going to um, bring our weight into the foot closest to the chair. So for you guys, that's gonna be your left foot, okay. And then go ahead and lift the right foot. And think of opening across the chest. And then think of being really strong in that standing leg. So just as we did in dog, the kneecap is raising, the leg is engaged. Now, if it feels OK, you could bring the foot out in front of you and look at your toes. And then you might even bend the knee and bring the thigh perpendicular to the floor while flexing the foot. Feel that you have to engage through the belly muscles in order to do this. And go ahead and release. Great. So let's just move our chair to the other side of our body. And Let's take a longer moment this time to set up. So looking down at your feet, that they're parallel, that they're hip width apart, okay? And you can tell if you bring your uh, hands to the eye bones of your hips and have your fingers pointed down, they should kind of land like in the center of your feet, okay? So you can probably walk in just a little. Yep, there you go, there you go, okay. And then thinking of opening across the chest, dropping down with the tailbone, like you had a big dinosaur tail and it was just gonna like be heavy and drop down, lifting up through the belly, and then bring the hand onto the chair. Start to drop the weight into the right leg, like it's a sandbag and you're just dropping lots of weight, and then lift up the opposite foot. And just pause here and you might see, can I let go of the chair? And if not, that's fine. But if you work at this over time, you will be able to. And then bringing the toes out in front. 
and feeling this leg is strong, this leg is strong by necessity, and then bending the knee, foot is flexed, and then slowly bringing it back down. Great. So let's keep this hand on the back of the chair and we'll just take another side stretch. So look down at your feet, bring them back to parallel, and then inhale this arm, opposite arm, up and over. So your left arm, you're just going to reach up and over. Great. So we did a variation of this when we were seated, and now we're doing a variation standing. And just feeling open through the hip, through the rib cage, and some nice deep breaths. And then you'll use an inhale to come back up, rise both hands up, and then just exhale slowly, bring your hands down. And we'll just, again, move it to the other side and take that side stretch on the opposite side. So looking down at your feet, hand comes to the back of the chair, and then opposite hand reaches up and over toward the opposite wall. And think of drawing in that tailbone and being strong through the legs. Great. And inhale and exhale. Come on down. Good. So, um, one thing I wanted to just demonstrate quickly, and I don't know that we all need to do this here, but I think it's a great pose. And I brought a pillow, actually, um, as a prop for at home. So this is a, um, you know, a lot of us have back issues. And so this is a great um, thing to release your back. It is also a good thing as far as just quieting the entire system and preparing you for sleep or any kind of relaxation. So um, simply coming down onto the floor, which I realize is not something everybody is comfortable doing, but if you are coming down onto the floor and you're just going to come onto your forearms and then bring the legs up onto either a chair or a sofa, whatever is available, and then lay back. And I have the pillow here just to give it even a little more height. Um, so part of what happens is these big heavy femur bones just drop down into the hip sockets and they don't have to be efforting at all. And actually, if you're, even though it feels good to have your legs up a wall, and a lot of people will do that, that is putting some stress on the backs of the legs. So this is just really the gooeyest, nicest, most luxurious form of this. Once you get down here, you know, you can listen to the radio. You, if you had it, you know, you can be in conversation with somebody. You do not want to move your head side to side. Okay, but otherwise it's a pose you can stay in for a while. And then you could even bring your knees in and just hug your chest a little, which will get even more release in that lower back. And then to come out, you're going to just turn onto your side in a fetal position and then use your hand to push yourself up. Head comes last. Okay, so there's that. Um, I wanted to show you one other really restful thing you can do with a pillow in a chair. So as I mentioned before, any kind of forward fold is a quieting pose. So it'll quiet the mind, it'll quiet the nerves. And so just having a pillow, um, partly it's kind of almost like, you know, a security blanket when you're a kid or something. But you'll just sit up and then come forward, actually taking the pillow the long way. And you might even have two pillows. And you can bring your arms under the pillows. And then just bring your face down. So 
So you have to, you know, play with the pillow a little bit so that you have space to breathe. <laughs> you know, you can kind of make a little, a little dent or something. But um, it's, it, you know, it's not unlike if you've ever hyperventilated or see somebody hyperventilate and, and people are saying, put your head down and, you know, breathe. So it's just a very calming, easy, easy pose that's, you know, very accessible. So the one other thing I wanted to um, end with was um, a, a breath um, that is, a, it's called Nadi Shodhana, it's a fancy name, and it is um, a breath that balances the left side and the right side. So, you know, you've heard of our left brain and our right brain have somewhat different roles that they play. So this is kind of balancing the two hemispheres of the brain, the two sides of the body. So, and in this, I'm not going to mirror you. I'm just, we're all going to use whatever our dominant hand is. So are you both right-handed? You're left-handed. Okay, well, this will be exciting. Okay, <laughs> but you know what you're doing. So um, I'm going to use my right hand. So I am not going to use kind of my peace fingers. <laughs> they're going to, they're not going to be used in this. So you're primarily using your thumb and your ring finger. So um, you'll inhale, and then you'll bring the ring finger, in my case, to the left nostril, and then I'll exhale through the right nostril. And then I'll inhale through the right, and then I'll bring my thumb over there, and I'll let go, and I'll exhale through the left. So now inhale through the left, and then close it up and open the other side and exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. <laughs> close that one. Exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close it. Exhale through the right. So see if you can close your eyes. Close your yeah, It is. It's yeah. very mental. So close your eyes. And I think because you're, you're using your eyes and you're overworking different parts of your brain. So take a big inhale. Now close up the left nostril. Exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close the right. Exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close the left. Exhale through the right. Inhale through the right, close it off, exhale through the left. Inhale through the left, close it off, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right, close it off, exhale through the left, and go ahead and release your hand. So, you can continue with that breath for, for a while, for a few minutes. And um, the one thing, if you are trying to do it on your own and you're frustrated, <laughs> is um, first of all, you can Google alternate nostril breathing and you can watch a YouTube video and somebody will do for you what I just did for you. But uh, the, the other thing is to always remember that the first breath on a nostril is an exhalation, which kind of goes counterintuitive. We tend to think of inhale first and then exhale, but it's, it's always the exhalation is the first breath on any side, and then it's followed by an inhale, and then you release and take the other, other nostril. So, and after doing that, I would just sit quietly for a few minutes. I might, you know, just lean back in my chair and whether I'm just softly gazing at something on the floor or a beautiful, you know, some flowers or something out my window or closing my eyes. And that's when I would just take a few minutes to kind of check in with what happened during my practice, how am I feeling, and just having a few minutes to be quiet and kind of letting the practice um, settle into my, into my body. And then it's also that moment of, you know, whether it's meditation or prayer, whatever feels appropriate for you, um, connecting that with what you just 
with what you just did.